So it is officially spring. Hooray! And I'm starting to see signs of spring in my garden. My first flowers have come up, Iris reticulata. And that's a big deal here in Colorado. Spring can be kind of slow to arrive. March and April are our snowiest months and we need that snow. And all the people who depend on our snowpack need that snow too. So it can be a little discouraging sometimes as a gardener, but I am seeing signs of spring to be sure. And spring is in full force here in the greenhouse. So today we're gonna do a cutting garden grow along check-in. I'm gonna show you what I have prepared, what's growing, what's planted, and the changes I'm making to the cutting garden space itself. I'm really excited and let's get started. The greenhouse is getting a little busy, which is fantastic. And you can see I've got lots of seeds started here, um, which is really fun. Not all of this is for the cutting garden grow along, but a lot of it is. And here, for example, are sweet peas. Now, sweet peas need a long root run. And so I planted them up in toilet paper tubes, which is a great and easy and cheap way to grow them. And look, we've already got little sprouts coming up which is so fun. They have only been planted up a little while too. I've also got sweet peas in root trainers here and there are all kinds of other things growing here. Um, under here, I've got snapdragons, which have not sprouted yet, but I expect any day that will happen. And then I will prick them out. And here we've got, I have some tomatoes and other things going, but I also have Crispadia and Tithonia. Oh, look, first little sprouts. Today's the first day. Oh, that's exciting. These are all on heat mats with domes over them. Um, let's see, check on the Scabiosa, nothing yet, but that helps aid in germination. So hopefully in the next couple of days, most of these things will have sprouted. It hasn't been very long for a lot of those seedlings. Um, over here I have tomatoes going, um, and this is mostly vegetables on this side. The cutting garden stuff is over here. So very, very cool. So I'm gardening in zone five, six here in Colorado, and I know many of the people participating in the grow along are gardening all across the country. We have more than 600 people who have said they're participating and that's just the people who have chimed in which is fantastic i'm super excited that you are all joining so i am working off of my spreadsheet that i prepared and i'm doing everything in time for my zone but some of you may have all of your seeds started already if you're in zone 10 or something like that you may have everything going, which is fantastic. So be sure to tag us so that we can follow along too. Use the hashtag BIGrowalong on Instagram and we'll come and take a look at what you were doing too. Like I said, I'm working off that spreadsheet. I don't have everything started yet because in fact, we will get lots more snow before the spring is over here in Colorado. So I'm just doing this at the pace that's right for our, my climate. And that's the way everyone should approach this. Do what's right for where you are. I'm using heat mats. Some of these seeds like the Tithonia and the Dahlia starts, those seeds benefit from a little heat to get them to germinate. So I'm using some heat mats, I'm using some lights, that's great. If you have a sunny windowsill and a warm house, for the most part, you can get all of these seeds going inside too. But that brings me to the topic of soil temperatures. Soil temperatures are important for germination, but especially for getting little seedlings to grow. I'm also planning for potting up. Some of these little starts won't be able to go outside for a couple of months but they will outgrow the pots that they're in. So I have to make a plan for putting them in bigger pots that's called potting up. And I'll show you as we come to that point, what that looks like. 
but that is something that you may need to plan for as well. If your last frost date is sometime in mid-May, like mine is, you might also need to plan for potting up a little bit too. It's not a big deal. It just means moving them to a slightly bigger pot so that they have some more room to stretch out their roots and don't get too cramped, which can stunt their growth. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. All right, let's go outside and take a look at what I've done outside in the cutting garden. Here we are out in the cutting garden and you'll notice if you've been following along, there have been some changes. So let me show you what I've done. I'm really excited about the way this space is shaping up. Okay, so just to give you the lay of the land, I have six raised beds along here. These smaller square raised beds each have a fruit tree in the middle. And then the larger raised beds have some roses planted in the middle of them. Um, but everything else that I grow around here pretty much is annual. So those are the perennials that are there. And then back along the fence, there are some very skinny raised beds, three of them. Um, and they have trellises that are mounted to the fence. And on those, I have some roses growing there, but that's also where I'm going to put the sweet peas so that they climb up the fence on that side. So here in these big beds, and these are four by six beds, the two in the middle, I have laid out the start of an irrigation system. So these are Oyas, they eventually get connected together and then they're fed off of a water source. And I haven't decided what the water source is going to be. Um, I can use these buckets, but I would need a lot of them um, because I'm going to do all six of these beds with this system. So I'm thinking I may put um, a larger container over here or hook them up to a hose and I just haven't figured that out yet. So that's why they're not connected. Um, but this is a great way to irrigate a raised bed. I'm super excited about this. So um, this system is gonna go together. I've laid out the two big beds. Eventually I will lay out the um, square beds also. They won't handle the trees very well, but they'll water everything else. And then I will hand water the trees that are over there. Um, they'll need more water than any Oya can supply. Um, but I'm really excited about that. The other thing that you see that I've started to set up here is a series of tent poles. And these will be um, covered eventually with plastic. I'll use agricultural plastic and they'll create essentially a row cover. Um, and they're super simple to do. You can see I've had them in my uh, potager garden all winter. And I literally have plants that I sowed in September, spinach and kale that have been growing since September and it is now March in Colorado. They have survived below zero temperatures. It's been amazing. So what I'm going to do, I'll cover this with ag agricultural uh, plastic and connect it at the bottom and that will help heat up the soil. That is a really important thing. So I measured, you, all you need is a little um, soil thermometer to measure the soil, but I measured the soil in here this morning. The soil in these beds is the same as the soil temperature in the ground, which is about 50 degrees. So that's too cold for most plants to germinate. 50 degrees is too cold for most seeds to germinate. That's not exactly true. A lot of seeds will germinate at temperatures that low, but they won't thrive. The little seedlings will really struggle in soil that's that cold. So I did an experiment. I went out and took the temperature of the soil in the raised beds in the potager garden that have been covered like this. And they also have incandescent Christmas lights in there. That soil temperature was 60 degrees. It is 10 degrees warmer in there than it is in these beds. So lots of things will germinate at 60 degrees in soil temperature. 
So that's my goal. After we, once I get the agricultural plastic up and everything sealed up, we're gonna raise the soil temperature out here so that number one, I can direct sow a few things and do that more quickly. And number two, when my seedlings are ready, they can come out and be put in the soil and not be quite so shocked. So that's the goal. I can't do that for the four raised beds where I have trees. That just isn't a good idea for those little trees. But I can do that with the other, the two big beds. And so part of my planning for what I can plant out and when I can plant it out is determined by soil temperature and being able to raise the soil temperature just a little bit in these two big beds and see how that goes. It's all an experiment. I haven't done this before in this particular bed, so we'll see how it goes. So that's it for my cutting garden update for today. But let us know how it's going in your cutting garden, how your grow along experience is going. Drop it in the comments or tag us on Instagram. I wanna hear all about it. And if you have questions, be sure to ask. I will happily answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy gardening.